Hey guys, what's going on? Josh here from Polymathics. And today I wanted to really quick give you some information about informative speeches. Um, so I'm actually in a speech class and um, aside from the textbook, there wasn't really a lot of good information out there on what an informative speech was and what it wasn't and things like that. So especially here on YouTube. So what I intend to do real quick is just give you some pointers kind of dispel some misnomers and things like that. Um, the first thing is there's several different types of speeches, right? And, and for example, there's persuasive speeches where you're trying to use ethos, logos, and pathos, right? Um, credibility, emotion, and logic to persuade your audience into doing something that you believe is the appropriate take action kind of measure. Um, and there are other speeches, but uh, there's an introduction speech, right, where you tell about yourself. There's also the informative speech, and even in the informative speech, there are different types, right? There's um, how-tos, where you kind of focus on a process. There's a conceptual speech, where you talk about different concepts. Um, uh, there are speeches where you can discuss events or, um, you know, give ideas, but... Uh, the main thing about an informative speech that really defines it is it's not really biased. Now, the fact that whatever subject you choose, you chose because you're passionate about it or you believe in it because the number one rule is don't talk about things that you don't care about. Um, so if you choose a topic, there is a little bit of bias there, right? You obviously think it's important for whatever reason, even if you're just talking about an event like these were the the aftermath of Pearl Harbor or something like that. You obviously believe it's important enough to spread the word. But the difference is you're, you're not telling people to make a decision between one thing and another. You're not trying to really make them go out and take action. You're just informing them. And so um, I actually, one of my classmates in, a, in the speech class that I'm going through, um, gave a really good, very informative speech on guns. And um, he was just stating facts. Now, it could have very easily been changed into a, inform uh, a persuasive speech had he just used a little bit of different uh, language. So the, the point here is that um, an informative speech is neutral. Okay? It's, it's very much a fact-finding thing. However, um, that's not to say that you can't use... Um, stories and emotional triggers to get people engaged and also um, to get them excited about your topic and so uh, the topic I did with was, was uh, polymathics like what is the polymathic mindset and um, I'm gonna if it's not already posted I'm going to post it on my channel so you can check that out but um, and so my approach was to give people information, give, inform them about what is a polymath, what is the definition of a polymath, what is kind of the history, but also I wanted to give them an idea of why the polymathic mindset, what, do, what, what differences are there between the polymathic mindset and regular everyday person, right? And I gave them three distinct areas. I talked to them about how they ask questions and I talk to them about how they face challenges and then I talk to them about how they deal with failure okay and we're not going to get into the, any of that now again go see the speech but the point is um, even though you're not persuading anybody right what if I wanted to persuade somebody about the polymathic mindset then instead of instead of telling them you know like these these are the the way polymaths approach problems and this is what a polymath is what I would have done is I would have pitted it against a different mindset, a different paradigm. So, for example, in a later video, I will do a persuasive uh, conversation uh, speech that focuses on the polymath mindset versus the monomath mindset. And where are the pros and cons? And, of course, the, again, when you start talking about pros and cons, now you're weighing things against each other and you're trying to persuade someone. So um, now, right before we leave, let me just give you an idea about what kind of format. Um, 
<laughs> you're always going to want to start off with a bang, something that's going to grab people's attention, right? And um, you can go for a very touching story. A lot of times, leave it open ended and don't um, don't finish it until the end of the story, right? And I'll probably have videos about this later, like you know how to start your speech and and things like that. But um, the the other thing is um, one of the most effective things that I've found is that even if you're giving facts and figures, which you should at least have like two or three quotes in there that's quoting some sort of statistic, that way it gives credibility to whatever information you're giving. Um, whatever facts and figures you're giving, they're they're hard for people to relate with unless you provide them a story. So tell them stories. Give them something they can relate with. Give them something they can use in real life. And then that way it will resonate with them. But, uh, okay, so I hope this has been very helpful. And uh, I look forward to seeing you guys in other videos. But until then, take it easy.